Which is better, a fifth wheel or a motorhome? Find out next. I've had three fifth wheels and now I'm in a motorhome, so which is better? If you're planning on camping longer term, chances are you're considering either a Class A motorhome or a fifth wheel. To help you decide, let's go over the pros and cons of each. So for the last two years that I was in a fifth wheel, I kept dreaming about getting a Class A. In my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're so nimble, it seems so easy to get up and go. And you know what? I was right. There isn't as much breakdown as far as getting the camper ready for travel, and the setup is also pretty easy too. I'm sure you've heard the term rolling earthquake. Well, the fifth wheel is not made for people to ride in it. What that means is when you get ready for a travel day, you have to put everything away, and when you finally arrive at the end of the day, you've gotta take everything out. Nothing can be left on the counters. Now, during the time that I had that fifth wheel, the microwave door came open and it spilled out the plate as well as the rack. Trim came off the windows and one time the recliner even unhitched from its partner and walked out in the middle of the room. I do clear off the counters, but sometimes I leave stuff out and it's fine. And it's actually quiet when I'm driving it. There's not a lot of stuff bouncing around. And I think that's a huge difference. This is a vehicle. It is designed to have people in it so it's better built and things aren't gonna bounce around as much. Also, you have to think about the dynamics of a trailer. It's gonna be bouncing. It's got a couple axles close together, so it's going to take more vibration versus a vehicle with wheels on the four corners. Hands down, the fifth wheel wins on floor plans. No matter what you want, you can get. If you wanna have a bathroom in the back, bunks in the back, living room, kitchen, bedroom in the back, you can find a fifth wheel floor plan for that. I mean, it's amazing all the different kinds of variations. Contrast that with a motorhome where you're gonna get the bedroom in the back pretty much, or else you're gonna get the bedroom in the back. I haven't seen them any other way. It will likely cost more money to insure the motorhome than the fifth wheel, but that depends if you're buying used and what kind of deal you're getting. And the maintenance is gonna be more for a motorhome. So just be aware before going in, you've got more moving parts, you've got a motor, you've got a transmission, so you're gonna have a little bit more money there, or it might be a lot, depending on how you shop and what you get. Now I will say there's a huge difference between the typical motorhome and the typical fifth wheel in quality. I'm talking fit and finish and build quality. If you're looking for residential build quality, you're going to find it in a Class A motorhome. You are going to have a harder time finding it in a fifth wheel. You can find it in the DRV line, but those, if you buy new, can be over $200,000. I always thought if you got a motorhome that you would have less windows. Well, it's not the case in this motorhome, and I'm sure if I found one with as many windows, you can too. I have a panoramic view from my dining room, living room, up the front in the cab and the huge windshield, and all the way along the side, which includes my office. Storage. I started out full-time life solo in a van and I quickly ran out of space because I wanted to cook, I wanted to enjoy life more, and it was harder in the van. So I bought a brand new 2020 Grand Design Reflection 260 RD. Let me tell you, that was the perfect fifth wheel. I love the floor plan, but very limited storage. The closet was about two and a half feet wide. That was barely enough for my clothes and there was not a whole lot of outside storage either. So when a boyfriend moved in, we got a 35 foot Grand Design 310 GK and we were quickly overweight. Why? Because although they have enough storage, they don't have enough cargo carrying capacity. Not when you add heavy tools, solar, and a washer and dryer. When you look at a motorhome, not only is there generally a lot more storage inside and out, I'm talking a lot more cabinets inside, a lot more places to put stuff, and then you go outside and it's like, oh my gosh, it's like the dream. There is so much space. If you don't travel light, and I do not travel light, <laughs> then a motorhome is likely your best choice. 
I weighed and I am underweight by a couple thousand pounds. There is unbelievable amount of storage and the all important cargo carrying capacity in most motorhomes. Now you'll want to do your own research because each motorhome is going to have a different number. So you want to make sure that you have enough for you. Let's talk about travel days. In a fifth wheel, the first thing I think about is the fact that if I'm driving the fifth wheel, I can get out right there. I have the driver's door. With most class A's, you don't have a door by the driver's side. A lot of people will say safety is a factor. You have the engine protecting you in a head-on collision while you're driving your pickup truck, whether it's a three-quarter ton or a one ton, and that you're more vulnerable in a class A. I don't like using public restrooms and a lot of people don't. So if we're stopping on the side of the road, you know, we've got to open the door and pull the ladder down and go inside. With a motorhome, that's a big reason for a lot of people. It's just so nice to be able to use my bathroom and there's no surprises that might be there in a public bathroom. The fifth wheel I used to have was a Grand Design 310 GK. I love that floor plan, but on travel days, you lose the living and dining area. I could access the fridge, and that was about it, and I could access the bedroom and the bathroom. But as far as actually relaxing, it wasn't that easy. Plus, if you're traveling on a warm day, that trailer's going to be hot. You can't just open the slides, by the way, because you need to be level. So depending on the floor plan of the fifth wheel, you may not have a place to rest and relax at a rest stop. With most motorhomes, you'll still have full use of the important areas, even with the slides pulled in. This means you can make yourself a meal, stretch out on the couch, or even take a nap. So think about it, you've been traveling all day, you're tired, you know you have to do the setup, and now you've got to get your camper in the site. Well, backing a fifth wheel is not that easy. There are actually t-shirts out there about the stress it is on a marriage to back the camper in the site. This is no joke. I have seen couples have public arguments because of the backing. I unhitch my toad, the car that I'm towing behind me, and backing up, I swear, I laugh every time. All I have to do is look at my side mirrors and just go back. If I have a long site that I'm backing into, I use cones. Now that you're all set up at camp, let's talk about daily driving. If you're camping in place longer, then your daily driver is more important. If you have a fifth wheel and you've unhitched it, now you have your truck to drive around. Well, if you're a Trader Joe's shopper like me, you know that a three quarter ton, a one ton is not gonna fit in your typical Trader Joe's parking lot. I mean, this can kind of be stressful. It certainly was for me for the last two years of having a fifth wheel is trying to park the beast. Now, if you've got a long bed and you've got a dually, that's even worse. Worse. It's really hard to park. Now this is a personal choice. A lot of people love those big trucks, so I'm not knocking the trucks, but I'm just saying for your daily drive, if you're trying to get into a typical parking lot, maybe a small town post office, it could be more challenging. With a motorhome, you're towing a smaller vehicle. Now I think a big downside to having a motorhome is that when you need the engine worked on, guess what? Your whole home goes in the shop. You've got to find a shop that will work on it, which generally is not too hard, but you could lose your home for a couple days. That's definitely a downside that you don't have to deal with with a fifth wheel. You can have the truck in the shop and you can Uber back to your camper and you're fine. If you already have a three quarter or one ton truck, the fifth wheel may absolutely be the answer for you. If you don't, it's not so easy to find a truck these days and boy, they are not cheap. Because the setup and teardown is so easy, I think a motorhome is gonna be better if you do more traveling. If you're only traveling every few months or six months, a fifth wheel may not be a big deal. But the more you travel, or if you wanna take a big break on travel days, the motorhome is better set up for that. It's really important to do the research to know yourself so you can find the right answer for you. There's a lot of things to think about as far as how often you travel, what you like as far as a layout, how much stuff you want to bring with you. So I hope this video helped. Let me know which you prefer, Class A or a motorhome. I want to hear it. And as always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.